All right, we're recording. Um, this video is going to be a bit rough, rough shot, ragged, so to speak, in the sense that we're just going to be throwing this thing out there. Uh, I am going to be pausing at certain points of recording. I'm not trying, going to try to get too jump cutty, but uh, first thing is to give a quick overview. Uh, we'll hop back out of this for a second. I kind of got a little bit premature. So, oh, shit, sugar and small potatoes. No, I didn't try to hit that. I tried to hit the other button and get out of the menu. Um, so, this is going to show, I go very slightly into how you can copy ROMs and um, BIOS files, etc. over your local network, uh, usually wireless, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, as well, what this mainly is going to be showing is how to um, set up your Pi with uh, the beam 240p scaling uh, trick, whatever the hell it is from the RetroPi uh, forms. So, first of all, get your copy of RetroPie burned off on your card, booted, and it, you know, it extracts its uh, file system, whatever. You know, in this case, is a, actually I had a Dollarama card, and I realized I had another plan for it, so I used a 32 gig that I had here, and this is the old one out of the old um, Sega Megapie, in an earlier incarnation. Now it's got 128. Uh, that being said, um, they... Um, you don't really need them to be too big, not for these purposes, but what this overview really is going to be is for somebody who's going to be hooking up a RetroPie Raspberry Pi, because they, you can get them on like other devices too, not just Raspberry Pis. Um, but this is going to be specifically, at least for it, you could probably apply it to like an old droid or something like that, maybe. I don't know. But this is going to be a, a cluster of files you're going to copy onto your Pi. And configured so using it just via stock composite out on your CRT, and I think whether you're PAL or NTSC, I don't think it really matters, um, because there's SG, SDTV underscore mode equals in the configuration file or config.txt, and this doesn't really use much except for you're going to be actually uh, just you know, disabling your overscan or something like that, to that effect, I should say. Um, I am going to show the file configuration as well, what you have to do, just basically tick those boxes. Um, basically, we're going to look at the forum post, and you're, you're going to extrapolate mostly from there, um, because, you know, we'll, we'll have everything set as we go along. So, without further ado, this shouldn't be too long. First thing we want to do is... We need a keyboard hooked up. In my case, I have a Pi 3A Plus and one wired controller. I didn't want to screw around with any wireless. I need the Bluetooth wholly for this. So I got a little Bluetooth keyboard here. There should be enough power on this thing now. So we're going to hop into the Bluetooth because we're going to pair the keyboard. This this is just, yeah, the low voltage there is just because I'm just using an off-the-shelf uh, power supply. I got another one there that's actually better, but it's charging something else right now. I need the amperage. So we need to register and connect to it, so I'm going to hold down my button, and then I'm going to hit the button, and yeah, it's just Bluetooth keyboard. If you have more ports, you can just connect a USB keyboard, that's fine, it should work. But you do want a keyboard because we're going to need to connect to the Wi-Fi, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it for anybody who doesn't, just so we're pretty copacetic on things here. So, settings, is it going to see it? Is it going to see it? Is it going to see it? Oh, no, let's try that again. Do I got to hold this down? I got to hold it closer and not that much. Usually it's got to be fairly close. This is the improved Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna, but I find for pairing, closer the better it works. Any day now. No devices were found. What, 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 and how and who now? Uh, hold on. Uh, we're just going to... So this thing is being a big pop who, you know what we're going to do? I have a keyboard here. So we're going to just get into the retro. You need to go into the Raspberry config. You need to make sure this thing is configured for everything. So, um... I think this one will work. Oh, wait, no. That's the working one. <laughs> we're a little bit raw here tonight, folks, as I said, but uh, we're working with it. So we're going to boot into that. 
And we're going to connect this keyboard up. And this one can go away. Because you need to configure this for your Wi-Fi. Yeah, I know, under voltage detected. So you need to go localization first, extremely first. So scroll through fast. I'm in Canada, so by default, the RetroPie image and Raspberry Pi in general is usually defaulted to ENGB. Hit spacebar, get rid of that, scroll up, or scroll down if you're American, I guess. But I'm here. Uh, we're going to use that one, I guess. Now, it might say, oh, it doesn't accept it, but on the next boot, it will, and we're going to reboot after this. Um, now, sometimes, as I said, it may have an issue, take issue with something, but it will correct itself on the next boot. Um, try to do a clean boot, though. Don't, don't, don't power your Pi on enough, because sometimes effects won't happen. All right, so localization again. Now we're going to do time zone. I'm in the, on the island of Newfoundland Labrador, so I need to go to America, which is North America and South America. Scroll all the way down in the S section for St. John's because St. John's is a distinct time zone in this list. Right here. I'm half hour ahead, an hour and a half ahead of Eastern. And well, uh, keyboard because uh, you are going to need it for um, layout because it says UK and a UK keyboard versus an English keyboard. The they're they're different they're different especially if you're going to be using the console for anything for any commands uh-huh now it's going to say falling back to whatever uh, that's fine now localization this last part is the most important if you're using wi-fi wlan country and we're going to go down to canada eh? They think I'm kind of slow, but I'm really from Canada. Eh? Now, performance options don't bother with any of that stuff because we're going to handle that in the config.txt. We're not going to need to do much. It's just going to be the clock adjusted and over voltage. We're not going to really do anything else. Uh, you don't really need to play with the CPU speed or anything like that anymore from what I've seen in the newest uh, versions of like RetroPie, well, the version of Raspbian that's built on. So we're going to hop out. Oh, I almost used the wrong keyboard. Uh, yes, we're going to reboot, but we're going to uh, pause as well. And the next time we're in here, we're going to have... A, um, actually, yeah, we're going to have another screen here. All right, we're back. Uh, we've rebooted. Uh, now we are going to go to the Wi-Fi section. And, of course, I need to swap cables again. Should be all right now that I've established... All right, it's doing that again. Like I said, I'm just using a cheap little adapter. There's, I have a better adapter where it doesn't actually do this. Uh, we're going to connect to Wi-Fi. A street. Password. Now, this one takes a second. Don't get impatient with this. This is still, you know, handshaking and everything like that. So, there we go. So it has my IP. That's my, I don't have to worry about, that's not my Mac or anything like that. We don't, I don't have to worry about any of this. So we're connected. Usually now we don't need the keyboard at this point anymore. We are, however, going to really run the quick update now to get everything going. So let's reboot this can one more time. And we will uh, go from there. Why are you doing things? All right, so we're back. Now we're going to run really quickly through the other part of the settings here, which is Retro by Setup. We're just going to, I'm going to show you just a couple of things you need to have in place. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything like, you know, setting up scrapers or anything. We're going to stick kind of to the part here that's at the most meat of, of this. So. The first thing we need to do is I'm going to show you how to run the update, which you're going to need to do. And right now this is doing the first time for the Mesa DRM because there are some things that have to be installed afterwards. These are proprietary, I believe, so these actually have to come from alternate libraries. But uh, yeah, here we go. And yeah, if it says you paid for it, you got robbed, and yeah, you did. So we're going to just go down one, update. Now, when it 
comes up and prompts you and says, do you want to replace the underlying OS uh, packages? No. You're going you're gonna to break a couple things that you can fix if you do this, by the way. You have to get into, like, you have to have a keyboard and you have to log in Pi, username, and Raspberry's password or whatever, and, and you you got RetroPi running again. But you have to go back into the Raspberry settings and then screw around a couple things. I'm not going to go for that. That's, that's, um, that's not needed. You follow what I do, then you should have it. So here we go here. I was going to set it's setting everything up right now. This is Linux. This is Raspbian, which is based on Debian, but it's Debian for ARM, which they call Raspbian because the Raspberry Pi is usually the predominant uh, Debian for ARM user. Um, but yeah, this really is getting up to date on everything, and it should prompt me in a moment to do that. And now I'm going to pause when it goes through the actual rigmarole of running all the updates for a lot of the emulators, as it will take a minute or so. So it just did the Mesa and the Omix LV, or whatever the hell it is. Now it's getting its new strings. And okay, do you want to update the underlying OS packages, ergo kernel, etc.? No. You should do that instead via newer versions when you have to absolutely update. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pause this and we're gonna come back because uh, I'm gonna prepare a couple files as well. All right, so we're back. I uh, updated and I also added a few other uh, uh, retroarch cores to things here. Um, now we're gonna go. We don't need to cover that. That's just under you go to manage packages. You go to like you know main optional. You go to optional. You go to experimental. All that stuff. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna go to configuration tools right here. And we're going to scroll down to Samba. This is the last real part now. After this, we're going to reboot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause again for a moment just to copy some ROMs over. And then the, we're going to show you guys what's what. You guys, gals, non-binary pals, Samba, configure Samba ROM shares. We're going to install them first. And when that is done, we are going to... Uh, I think that's it. They're installed. So... I don't think we have to do anything else because Samba is usually a service that is on startup for this. Uh, just to see anything else? No, that should be it. Now we're going to perform the reboot, um, but through a shutdown. So we're not going to do it through that. So what we need to do is uh, this right here is quit. And we're going to shut down. And we'll be back in a moment for some ROMs. All right, so we're back. Let's turn this on now because I want to make sure that we have everything going properly. Here we go, our little rainbow. <coughs> and um, now I didn't turn... Now, see how this stuff here? You can, by now, turn this off, like the verbose stuff. In your Raspberry Pi, there is a uh, folder called boot that you can use on any computer. It's just a FAT32 folder. And there's two text files in there, config.txt and cmdline.txt. CM, ooh, yeah, it is picking up on my games. CMDLine.txt, open that up, and in there there's a small spot, and there it says TTY equals 3 and you, uh, to 1, and you switch it to 3, and that switches it to verbose mode. Now, um, <clears throat> I did go ahead and disable, um, I did go into the config.txt, and I did change one entry, and the config.txt is the config file for the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> and had a puff while well, I was copying the ROMs. All I did was, though, in the very top of the file, there is a thing. It looks like what some would call hashtag. It's a pound sign. This is, or uncomment is actually what it is here. Is disable underscore overscan equals one. You want to delete that pound sign or hashtag or, un, and you comment it in. In other words, so uncommenting is the hash. And so it'll it'll ignore them. But if you take out that, it will no says. Oh well, I have to disable overscan. One means yes, or no, I forget how it is, zero and one. But now we're here. So I just want to show off real fast, like, uh, we got a few games here. You're currently viewing in 480i. So, uh, yeah, we'll do Quake. Why not? <clears throat> it's just going to take up the full screen anyway. Now, this is 480i. You see, this is a bit of a jiggly radiating mess there. Oh, it's not very loud. Oh, two seconds. Hey, sorry about that. Real quick, before you do, we hop into the games and then hop back out, go to settings, 
go to audio, the very first setting, hit enter. Make sure you have a keyboard hooked up. We want to go down to here. We want to go to the mixer. This thing is not loud at all. You, I want to turn this thing right up, and here we go, and hit escape. Now we're out. We now return you to your regularly scheduled shit post. Thanks, cheese. All right, supports. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna quake. Where's my remote? In case it is a bit loud on this telly. Oh, shouldn't be bad. But um, yeah, hopefully I don't get sued. Because there's the music. Uh, I got the, all the pack files, and I got the OGG files off of archive.org. You have to rename them yourself, but you can set this thing up to run the full commercial version. Now, this is running 480i, which is fine for some people, and it doesn't look bad. Uh, just let it run through a little bit, because, you know, it, I don't have to play. <laughs> this is actually the second or third level, but uh, you can still see it's a little bit crawly and things like that, and spaces here and there. Quite adequate still, but we'll hop out of this. Just remember what you just saw. Uh, PlayStation. Okay, so Tekken 3. This should run quite fine on this. We're, I haven't touched any configurations whatsoever, by the way. I have installed some uh, cores and one, one is not core. Oh, wait. I do have to tap a button here, I think, and actually... Yeah. No one should be playing that much. Because the cores, I don't think, even... Whoa, what's going on here? Oh, that's running. There must be a problem with the other one, I guess. Maybe my version of Tekken is shot. Oh, well. We won't use Tekken for the demonstration right now, because I couldn't give a shit, <laughs> to be honest. But um, you saw there was like some artifact-y little bits around the logo, possibly. I'm seeing it here on the CRT, and parts around Spider-Man, and like the uh, text and everything like that is crawling around a fair bit, and... Um, that little blippy part in the center of the screen, though, that's that's just a bug. It just does it with everything this captures. Now, I don't know if you're going to notice it on, on there, but on here, like, I'm, I'm, when I'm playing it on this TV, I see, like, a lot of, like, jitter. And, you know, it's fairly bright, but it's, like, it's for ADI, it's not 240p, and you can tell, like, if you plug an actual PlayStation in running this game, it would look different on this television. So... There's that. Tekken just didn't work for some reason. Weird. Uh, let's see how Space Area works. I guess Pico Drive. I might have to get some new ROMs though soon. But again, a game that was meant for 240p. You can see it around like the trees, especially when I'm watching through the screen here. But the trees, you can see it here on uh, on the capture as well as a jittery mess. So, but uh, yeah, you can see like around some things that there's uh, definitely like some crawl and things like that on the go. Uh, but we'll hop out of this too. <coughs> We're going over this very quickly for demonstrative purposes. But yeah, I've shown enough. I think. Well, we we'll want to show one more, which is like the hedgehog. Oh, I should have put Castlevania on here, the, the Genesis Mega Drive version. Um, I don't have flaws on that computer to copy them either. I don't think. I gotta do that at some point for file management. Anyway, enough of that. But like, under, like, some of the logo and things like that, and, like, especially the background, is very much, there's a lot of artifacting. Ooh. I'm gonna just get out of that. We'll actually just actually play the game for a minute. I love this game. Like it still looks great. It looks better than an actual stock uh, versus the, the the PlayStation version. This looks better than a stock uh, Genesis, but that had notoriously bad comms. It. If you uh, play the Castlevania game that I just mentioned. The empty parts of a life bar just look like a blurry mess versus like a like a, the empty cell look of how they're supposed to look. Because really, in a lot of markets, they were supposed to have much better video hardware. But we'll start using like the SCART hardware. Anyway, so let's see. 
Can I get some water? I need to get underwater. Here we go. Yeah. So it still looks fun, but it's like... You can see some stuff here and there. Still doesn't look too bad. Like, it's still handling a 480i signal fine. I'm not trying to be a total neckbeard of it, but... And we're going to use MuBand Plus because that actually is pretty adequate for a lot of the games now. Even like, oh, I don't have the clock ran up on this, though. It's probably run like trash. Let's see. Let's find out. Maybe not, though. Well, what we'll end up doing anyway is... Before we reboot, we'll throw up the clock just so we get optimal performance out of this old girl. Oh, still, it's not bad on this regular clock. I was crackly, but that'd be fixed when I clock it up. Oh no. Hee hee. Tee hee. Shabora buffer. I'm going to throw a significant overclock on this, but. Although, you know, it's fine. You can see the anti aliasing, but that's more like a Nintendo 64 thing. And, you know, resolution, but. It. You can you can kind of tell it's 480i. We're, we're going to play with a couple things now in a minute. Uh, we're going to change this. Quit. And we're going to get out of this. Let's just hop out of this. So, we need to hop over to a PC that's also on the network here because we have to get some files now and we're going to try to go for what we're going for here. So, bear with me for a minute. All right, so we're back. Now, we're over on my PC. Ooh, starting to get low on light here. I may have to increase my... Uh, my overall learning. Ooh, wrong mouse. Wrong mouse. I have to go to here. I have to go to here. And I have to go to here. Won't be too much longer anyway. Uh, okay. Now we're back on to my little pause button thing. So now we're on to... The retro product forums here, this can be found just going into most any search engine, Google, Bing, whatever your thing, and I didn't try that. Uh, putting in RetroPy MAME 240p, and you're going to find this form here. Now, size it up a little bit just so viewers at home can have a look, and people are talking about, like, oh, I'm, I'm having problems, like, you know, accurate representation of things. And somebody's like, oh, there's a retro thing, and blah, 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 blah. And so this person here, so this is, let's give all, uh, G. Hogan 42, credit goes to this person. So, yeah, they talk about, like, you know, not enough go to God for, you know, using the jacks on these things, et cetera. So this is a short sort of version of what they say. So you boot up your RetroPie, and you blah, 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 you set it all up like we just did. And then, you know, we ran all the updates, all this stuff is good. And I've done this already. This is, this is where they tell you, you have to disable overscan one. So take that hashtag that's in front of it and delete it and then save your what you did. And this is going to, you know, so full screen instead of like a cropping. Uh, so we got to boot it up. Now we're on Samba. So we're going to go here. Sorry. Oof. Hot mic. Hot mic. Oh, my other screen is hard to see. Yeah, I take it over here. And we need to go here. Network. Now, my RetroPy should be shown up. It may take a second. What? Oh, wait. How? <coughs> so, my other card, my main card that I actually used day to day, connected up fine. And we had Samba running. So, I'm going to go double check, make sure Samba's running. And then we're going to be back because this is the part where Samba comes into play. 
Sorry about that. I uh, just went out of the pod and restarted the shares. Just went to the um, area where I, it was all installed. I just had to go in and restart the shares for some reason. It wasn't running uh, on reboot for some reason. So there's some different share file, uh, file folders here. So a couple to pay attention, not directly to this, but if you want to copy your games and they say, oh, you need a certain BIOS file for running things. So the BIOS folder here, you just drag and drop them in. Sometimes you have to open it up and there's a sub subfolder within you may have to for like Dreamcast. We're not going over that. There's quite a few things you can find online that'll tell you what exactly you have to do for in that BIOS folder. Or you can actually find pre-made BIOS packs. Not exactly legal, but you can find them. If you're daring. ROMs, just what it sounds like. A through Z listings of all the games. Now, certain ones, their folders will not show up until you install the actual uh, emulator. I believe Dreamcast is one of them. Uh, splash screens is if you have your own splash screens. Configs is where we're going to be focusing on. So we're going to about configs. And so in this tutorial, they tell you about this folder here. Configs, we're going to go to all. So all. And now they show a file here you need to get. So we're just going to get it. We're not using this because I'm using Edge. Believe it or not, Edge is actually amazing. <laughs> it's not. Uh, this is a Windows 732-bit machine that's well over 10 years old. It is snappy as fuck. Like, not even bullshitting. So, oh, that opened up over here for some reason. So here we go. This is our uh, Toshiba. We're going to have another folder actually open. So let's... Uh, Open up another explorer. We're gonna go to desktop. Um, new folder. Don't care what it's called. This is gonna go to over here. To the new folder. Now you do have whatever you want. You can hit the extract, whatever. I'm not telling you how to unzip your files. You gotta know how to do that. That's on you. So we have this in this new folder. This is what's necessary now. So, uh, snap won't really work for this, but we'll make we'll we'll work with it. So, we're in what this refers to here. So the directories you got to make sure to go into is the what we'll call here the all is root. We'll call it root. So the root of the folder you need to have the retroarch.config and these two script files copied over into. So we're gonna go do that now. So, and then you. Uh, okay, so that's this file, this file, and this file. I'm going to copy. We're going to paste them right in here. And it's going to probably prompt us, yes, do this for all conflicts, and that is copy and replace. Because we need to copy over this retroarch uh, uh, thing. So the next thing we need to do is we're left with, now, this config.txt, uh, let's see. I want to see what this one is. I think this one's just kind of souped up. I think this is old anyway, this one, this config. Oh, why isn't it word wrap on? Oh, because, oh, no, I need to actually. Yo, mousey mouse, come on to work. Don't fail me now. This thing just literally up and died. Oh, well, akimbo. Anyway, uh, no, I think this is, oh, this is just for the disable over scan comment, really, and some overclock suggestions. That's fine. I guess we're going to be doing the old reach around, Sonny. Oh, God, no, not this kind of crowd shot. <laughs> Anywho, so we're going to go back over here for a moment. So the next thing we need to do is over around, uh, here is a folder retroarch, then shaders. Now, this is the other folder and subfolder we're going to need to worry about now because all we're copying over now are shader files. So let's hop over. So keep in mind first, oh, accent. There's this one, GLSLP. So you need to go to here, RetroArch, as I said. Because we're on a network, it's going to take a second. All right, so work down the list. Shaders. Here we go. That's basically the root of these shader folders. Now the subfolder shaders. Then it has to be accessed. And now we're going to use 
these two GLSL files. Now, one is just for Game Boy Advance because the Game Boy Advance is not quite uh, the same as other stuff. So, and that's in here. So now we have these all copied. So we can hop back now into the Pi and see what we reaped. And plus, we need to do a couple more little things on that end. So uh, we'll meet you back there. So now we're going into it rebooting. Um, the Pi had to be running, of course, to do that, copy all those files. It needs to be running on your system. I didn't bother to do this because just, yeah, it's fine. It's an animation. It doesn't give me a black screen. It tells me stuff's working. I haven't done my, um, I haven't done my um, reconfiguration of the speed for this thing, but we're going to do that real fast, like actually, and I'm going to show you how you can do that, but you still need a keyboard again. So, unplug. Oh, crap, hold on. Oh my god, that's what the guy said in that weird reset music. No shot. Uh, no, I did that bass backwards. First, we need to quit out of this part. So, we're going to quit emulation station. It's going kick to kick us to a command prompt. Now, this is one advantage that we have over running the, uh, sorry, over running the, um, sudo, we're going to go sudo, nano, boot, config.txt, here we are. So, there's a couple of things I'm also going to point out in this config folder. Some people do, and you shouldn't, especially now you're on Buster, which is Raspbian 10. So first thing is right here, my TV has it clipped off. Sorry. Um, but the little pounds on in front, delete that in front of this. This is why here it shows up white. This has been, you know, anything that you do like that. You can kind of make them out a little bit there. So besides that, we're going to make this thing a little bit faster. So some people also, i gotta, I got to talk about it when we cross over to that, which is um, there, right here, SDTV mode equals, and then a lot of people go in there and they say, like, oh, I just have it for 16 for progressive NTSC or 18 for progressive PAL. One. Your entire experience from boot to shutdown is going to be in that, and it's usually 240p. I don't, this way it doesn't really bother with that. You can still have 40, 480i menus, and you will have 480i um, command prompts. So you'll still have a legible command prompt for anything like 80 column text or what the hell they call this. Um, so you can still configure your stuff on the fly and everything like that as well. Uh, 240p suites are going to be suggested. I'm not really going to use them because I don't really need them for what I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to be showing it. We're not going to be uh, configuring by that. But don't bother with the SDTV. Let your whatever thing, whatever you're plugged into get picked up on its own. The Pi will deal with it because then it will know what it's dealing with, as I said. Um, whereas that will always lock you in. Yeah, so um, we are going to go here, though. And because I have a very aggressive cooling system, I'm going to go, uh, well, we'll be a liberal and we'll say 1500. Besides that, we need to have an overvoltage. So, what is it? We're going to take a look for a second. I forget what that is. <coughs> Sorry about that. Over underscore voltage equals six now they say now i went in tom's hardware forms and they actually do list them out and they tell you what you should do based on your pi and what they recommend for cooling with them over voltage will help the cpu not bottom out too much now turbo that's not going to help you and i've seen others where they're like gpu frequency or whatever and 3d uh, 3vd uh, settings one, none of that's going to help you. Two, if you have settings like CPU uh, underscore frequency equals and you have a set value for that, that actually sets your GPU and everything. That will conflict a lot of different settings. Don't bother overclocking your SD RAM. You're, you're going to want to do this if you're like going to be like rendering shit or anything like that, but really just 
if you're using multi retro arch, adjust that. Now, CPU frequency equals 550 can be helpful sometimes if you're using the older hardware. That's still valid, and there's a voltage setting I can, I think, put in the comments later on or something if it ever comes to mind, and you can use that on a Pi 1, 1B, and I think possibly 0. And it will actually give you uh, increased voltage through your USB. But this is all you really need. So you hit Control X, Y, Enter, and then um, we're going to reboot. Right. We're not going to need the keyboard at least for a while. If not ever. So the good thing is I know is that this 3B Plus reboots a lot faster than um, my other three Pies, including mine now passed on. <laughs> three, uh, 1B. So we're going to show a couple things here. So the menu is still 480i. So we're going to hop in. I got Grisor. So we're going to want to just use its emulators built in the Caprice 32. Now, when we get in there, you need to hit, if you don't have hotkey, it's going to be select or whatever. Oh, bugger. First, let's hop out of this. Let's act like we didn't hop in there. When we hop into this, we need to boot in here for a second. So when it says press key here, when this switches now, okay, so we're here. It says press any key to get into this menu. And you just spam it to get in here. You need to go down to here. We don't use config. We use video output resolution. That's going to make things a lot easier for you when you're in RetroArch screwing around with things. Don't bother with this if you're going to be using a non-RetroArch uh, game. Not a, So in other words, an uh, emulator. In other words, a non-core emulator. So something like uh, standalone like Raycast or something. Raycast settings are actually in, within uh, the Raspi, uh, Ras, uh, retro uh, Res, <laughs> RetroPie settings in the settings on uh, Emulation Station. So we're going to go in there. We're going to go into that. So to recap again, we didn't have to bother with anything here except for you go to this part and you're selecting. You go to Video Output and hit this. Start. Now that we're in here, you notice it's a bit off looking. So now we're in the quick menu. That's usually either select or your hot key and your north key on your D-pad. Uh, on your, on your, here. So the top button here. Could be triangle, could be whatever you're using. We're going to go back through this into its main menu. And we need to first go down settings. Confirm. Go to configuration. And you need to press right. So it goes to on. Go back. So now anything we do here will save otherwise if you anything we do here that if you did this before without doing that when you reboot or exit this the settings will change again we need to go to video we need to go to scaling now and we need to go turn on integer scaling and we need to go to this custom one the custom one doesn't work with everything keep that in mind however a lot of things it works for quite well so for example this is all we need to do uh, I'm going to show you as you go along, there are certain spots you do need to do it in, but no, this now we should be pretty much on the mark. So we're going to just uh, hit again the hotkey or select and exit out of this. And look at that. Look at that. And it looks way better than. I didn't boot this before, but it uh, it actually, like when I showed it before and then when I adjusted using this, the video output helps it a lot. You won't get any, like, shimmer or anything. So, so remember, up to jump, oh boy. Ah, oh, no, I'm dead. It is, I am dead. Man, I suck at this game. But it, it, it captures quite fun on this, which is great. We're not getting into that. We're not here for that day, shiny boy. No. Anyway, not really here to play this, Sean. But yeah, that's, uh, for example, it's CPC, a micro. Micros have exotic um, settings. Now, Berserk. We're going to do Berserk. Berserk voice, actually. This is not using recorded audio. This is oscillating hardware. 
So, yeah. Oh, bugger. We did it again. Uh, I'm out of that. Again, you know, do the little tappy tappy thing. So we need to go down to again here, and you need to go to video output. Now we're going to launch. Video output, just as I says, it leaves it more in RetroArch's hands. So now, settings. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, uh, 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 configuration. Because sometimes you just want to do it for a single uh, ROM, and you don't want to save the settings. Don't go in there, flick the knob, and then that way the next ROM you go into won't have those settings to have it all screwy. Maybe it's like a weird widescreen or something like that. Again, scaling. You have to turn the integer scaling on. This will honor the pixels, so to speak. Now here, you see it's too big. So flick down once and flick left, down, left. Now we have the actual resolution. So it does look a little boxed, but this is, you know, you can kind of flick these around now and have these uh, point. Now, it might look good that way. But, um, not always will it look quite good like that. Sometimes you got to flick around a little bit with other things, and sometimes you got to use other resolutions, like I said, with things like some ROMs in MAME. But this should be fine. Uh, looks like it's fine. Like, I'm seeing the three pixel lines for the bottom of that logo just then. That looks fine. Uh, uh, you dumb robot. No, run into it. That's fine. That works. I know we're beating a dead horse, but same thing. Now, Commodore 64, we got uh, Vice. We're going to use Mayhem Monster Line because Commodore 64 is, again, one of these uh, ones where you've got to make sure, you know, to take into account the scale and the overscan. Some of these things ran a significant overscan as well, so... It may say it ran, runs these pixels, but it runs them at an overscan. So we're going to do this. Um, same thing. Go back to the one. So back one. Settings. Configuration. On. Video. Scaling. Oh. Turn on your integer scaling. And when it does this, always hit right. Because when, you're, when you hit this and it goes like this, go down one. Hit right. There you go. Hit right to custom. Custom will usually always give you a 2x, sometimes a 3x by mistake, and you have to flick left and right on each of these respectively, but then, yeah. So, that should be it. Now look at that. Before, it would usually squat it in a bit and cut off some of the resolution of the letters, but no, this seems to be fully within its wheelhouse now. Oh, bugger! You know one thing we didn't do? So, this is to address things in general in RetroArch if you have problems like this. So, that's loading slow. So, the quick menu is usually what you hop into anyway on default when you hop into the menu in RetroArch. And that's because it's pertinent more to your specific core. And in this case, down here, we got to go to Options for LR Voice. And we have to go to Load Warp turned on and True Drive term Emulation turned off. And let's restart this. Uh, at least you've got the main stuff set. I'm not a fan of like true speed loading. If you're test betting homebrew or anything like that or benchmarking, sure, that's cool. But no, let's just let this go. I'm like, look at it. Looks great now though, C64. Like, looked a bit crawly and everything first and squat in. The scaling wasn't quite right. Cool thing is this gamepad has a little analog button here and it automatically does an analog swap. If you don't do it, the, it just does it for these anyway, depending on what you're playing, but this is just did it. I may need a keyboard. Oh, wait, no, LR Vice has things for keyboards. Now, we're, we're, I don't really care about the settings ever. It does have scanline compatibility. Nice. Like, look at that. That looks a treat. It even looks even better than when I tried it before because I, I, I haven't played this in so long that I haven't played it since I didn't understand the scaling and everything. And now I've actually got this. Like, look at this. I'm going to play this some night for a stream, I think. Some C64 games. I 
I got the magic. But anyway, there's that C64. Looks great now. ColecoVision. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. So, same thing. Config. Video output. Make sure you never hit anything else. Sometimes there will be an issue. I haven't gotten to the nuts and bolts. I had to fucking fix the right protect on it. But, like, you can't set it back. And I did that with my meme. And I'm actually going to redo my card anyway. So, yeah. Story for another day. But what we're going to do is, again, we're going to do... Oh, I have my analog. Still left none. Same thing. Settings. Configuration. On. Video. Scaling. On. Custom. Now, that stretches it, but it's set it to stretch. I think it... Oh, maybe it does get like that. Let's see. It looks fine, though. I'm like... Now, you got a 240p sweep for this, I guess. Here we go. This looks great. I do find that they... There's, um, it's not this washed out, but I guess it's more color accurate representation on games when you do this versus, like, they look a bit too brilliant and saturated, I guess, the colors when when they're 480i. But anyway, click a vision. Um, Dreamcast. Does this one work, I wonder? We'll do the same thing as before. So, frame buffer res is usually... Hmm, wait. Default video mode. Well, we'll just do that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that one. Uh, and we'll just let it run, I guess. I got a good configuration. We're not really here to run Dreamcast today, but no, oh, it does boot. Oh, well, well, Dreamcast works. It looks pretty friggin' nice in 240p, but we're not here for that today. That was just going to be gravy. Uh, Famicom Disk System, though, one thing I do like is using a different one than they select for you because it just, for loading shit. So we're not going to, don't, we're going to use uh, this middle one. Vision? I don't know. FCEMU. But it's not the other one. It's the middle one there. And we're going to go, same thing, config, video, output, resolution, Hit launch. The reason why I picked that one is it just loads them nicer. And we're going to get ready. Same thing. Oh, wait. I'm still on the analog. Settings. Config. On. Video. Scaling. Integer, yes. Over to custom. And there we go. Should load. Yeah. Vertical scrolling, there was no clipping whatsoever there. That just looked nice and smooth. So far, so good. So, I don't know if I get hit for a copyright for this thing or not. I don't know, because this is this is not a commercially available incarnation either. This is fair use. I mean, usually I get that. I'm not monetizing this anyway, so... This is just... This is just a... A little service that I help provide for people who want to do a little 240 PP. <laughs> oh god, the PP Goblin watched Teen Titans go and that guy was on there. But it was the Pet Peeve Goblin. They said the PP Goblin, but they didn't end up with a real PB joke. Anyway, so that looks fine. All the pixels on Mario's head and everything look good. If you're going to run and scroll and things look shimmery, your scaling is off. Simply put, your scaling is off. As well, here, although the top line for the pixels for these blocks in this game in particular are they have a light line all top of them to signify, uh, signify moonlight because this is supposed to be midnight or overnight radio the show's theme so it's supposed to be this hour of the night um, you'll see uneven crunching in some of the proportions on the blocks and that in this game and the original Super Mario Brothers would mean improper scaling same thing here Sonic 2 <clears throat> I got a few systems on here. Um, but I mean, like an hour? That's not too bad. Oh, bugger, we did it again. 
did it again, did it again. Boom, 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 kick something in the hole. All right. Config. Video output. Nothing else. The Raycast thing is different because Raycast works differently. The cores are different. It's not a core. So, again, settings, configuration, congratulations. Over. Whoa. Let's see now. Does that do that right or is that stretched? Yeah, that's that's my dude that's stretched <laughs> here we go okay so for a couple things yes the horizontal is integer scaled differently like the ColecoVision that we saw that one I think actually is fine like that but I think you can do just do 2x 2x this one integer scaling being on will properly display your pixels so we have it here like this and it's on Now, look at the shoreline especially. It looks a little bit artifacted on the feed there, but on the television it looks amazing. But, um, no, I want to play the game. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, it looks nice. And, like, yeah, the, the, the scan lines are spot on in this thing, too. Uh, if you got a 480p television, one of those enhanced definition things or whatever they call them, you might not get the scan lines depending on the model you have. I think some of them actually had a default internal switch for interlaced it would yeah but like that was for like 480i 240p content legacy support not for you know some just did were like no we're gonna we're gonna bump up the next progressive one but all right now let's look over to the water well, looks nice now looks a bit more blended Anyway, that's great. Nintendo 64 Pod Racer. And now I have the overclock turned up as well, as we've done. Should be fine. It's a hell of a cooler on my uh, rig. So. That's not how you do it. So, hopefully it doesn't crash or anything. Man, there's some traffic out of my road. All right, come on. It does look a bit more authentic. N64 has a soft look to it. It's just what it does. Thunderbolt, as I said, it's the adapter I use. Okay, so free play. Now the audio is a little bit, you know, meh. I can still do some other things to it, but we're not really here for that. So weird. It sounds like it's still drawing in your pod as you go. There we go. As soon as you turbo the guy, though, he's fine. I don't want to be busting up the engines yet. But, yeah, like, it actually looks really nice now, like... I'm looking at the TV and it looks like the, I, I wish I had a camera getting B-roll some close-up, but we're not doing that. I'm going to show it off in another video at some point in the next couple days with a decent camera. But yeah, it's, it, oh man, like, it's that, it, that, any, that aliasing that you're seeing is actually just actually lining up with pixel lines on, uh, with scan lines on the television. So... There we go. But yeah, look at this. I mean, like, this is great. Actually, we're running out of time, though, Sean. Let's, let's, not, let's not do too much here. <clears throat> we got it. Oh. <sighs> Super Mario Brothers. Speaking of. So, we're going to do that one, too. So. Okay, this one's... Oh, yeah. I forgot. If you switch over that as well, NES has the same settings. Because, well, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Goomba's head doesn't look right. Look at it and crawling around. So, this one, we have to look and see. Sometimes, if it's under a different uh, heading, 
like this, it'll have its own settings. So, scaling. Our custom is there. Now, I believe this one has additional settings. We have to go to options and aspect ratio just stays the same. Um, crop horizontal overscan. Yeah, I shouldn't be really doing it. But yeah, sometimes you have to play with little settings in here, which we're going to see now actually. So. We just change those settings, let's run this now here and see if that just adjusted for the vertical. Feels like, like there's something going on. A little bit of the vertical, just the way it was represented. All right, so, whoa, what's going on here? Did that fix or what the hell? Oh, yeah, that's why. That, no, that's not scaled. There. So, sometimes these won't, for some reason, be scaled properly. These settings in here, usually you flick over to the custom. Usually it'll have everything set, but not always. In the case of this one here, uh, the resolution was not the same. So, now it is. So, look at the Goomba's head and look at the blocks. And now again, light at the top. Now we're going to run with them. There shouldn't be any shimmer. And, ooh, he's doing his little blinky thing. But there. Also, my capture device looks like ass. PC Engine. Same thing. Go in. Ooh, wait. Oh yeah, we have to fix that on the other end too. But we'll launch here. Uh, for the previous time there, we were just in. Oops, hit the wrong thing. So yeah, we did the output. Go back. Settings, config, video, scaling. The custom should work on this one fine. Then we're going to go to see if there's anything. Quick menus, options. Where's that to? We don't need to bother the shaders because I think they're automatically configured except for GBA and I didn't really bother that day. Um, no, it's scan line, everything. Yo, that's fine. No, that should be fine. That does stretch it. So if you don't like the way it stretches, all you gotta do is, and I don't like the way that stretches. We're gonna go down here, and we're gonna fix that scaling. On our videos, scaling mode, and we're gonna, that makes it a little bit too funny. So what we should do is then correct it with four by three. Sometimes four by three will actually make it look better. But remember, the order I just did it in. So we'll go back. Custom, I set, before you set to 4x3, make sure you have your multipliers locked. Because what this is doing is, this, this whole thing is, it's allowing your TV to basically, the pie basically framed um, uh, line doubles everything, and then it cuts out a line. So you get your scan line, and if your integers are in line, and your resolutions are in line, everything is in line, it acts exactly as like a 240p signal. So here... We're going to, for PC Engine, as I recommend, do 2x on both uh, dimensions, and then we're going to hop over in aspect ratio to 4x3. Now it looks amazing. Looks spot on for, for a very pleasing thing. Now I'm going to throw an analog for this, for the thumbstick. Look at this. There's no shimmer. That's why I use blazing lasers. There's side to side motions. There we go. 
But no, everything seems to be quite fine. If you do any shimmer at, at points, just know where to hunt around in your settings as I just showed you, and you usually should be able to correct it. So we're going to hop out of that. I can play the game for hours. Ports! This is the fun part. So Quake, same thing. Yep, even Quake can have a nice little 240p feel to it. So because you're using cores, you can actually go in and set to choosing for output and things like that. We're going to go and launch. I'm not using my USB hub because it's just whatever. Now, you notice there is a little bit of weird pixelation and stuff, so we're going to go here. Now, this is where you can end up with things being a little bit weird. So, we're going to go settings. We're going to go what we do. We're going to go configuration. Oh, let's take that out. That screws me up using the thumbstick for that. It's not accurate. Uh, and we're going to turn the integer scaling on. And we're going to go over here. Now, the scaling being what the scaling is. Look at it, though. Now, when we, when we, when we go in. One. It looks like it's pretty spot on now. It is cropped up looking, so we did that same adjust from before. You play around these now, and you might be able to find something that's a little bit better. But sometimes, depending on what you're using, you may get shimmer. A game like this, the shimmer comes in from its graphics engine, though, as well. And some people are like, oh, use GeoQuake. Yeah, GeoQuake's not the same as this. GeoQuake's a different engine they adapted the game for. So you can just find what you like. We're going to go for one. But you can see it here. I'm not going to bother play it because we don't really need to. It's being played. It's nice. Even this game got scan lines. It's amazing. We're going to hop out of this, though. I just showed what needed to be showed there. Oh, actually, we will use Tyrion. Now, Tyrion, we're going to do this, too. So Tyrion is not a core. Tyrion is just its own thing. It's open Tyrion. That's the Tyrion, open version of Tyrion. So default video mode, we're, I'm in NTSC LAN SDTV 4x3. We're going to do that. And then we're going to go to the set the, oh, no, the ROM part doesn't work. Where's it do? Here, select frame buffer res for open Tyrion. Now, it's hard for you to read, but it's this one right here you can see. You can set it to 240p. I actually, because we're frame doubling, I set it to 480i. And I'm on a 480i television, so I'm going to let it frame double. <laughs> I'm just going to play for a minute, just show it off. And this game is so amazing. Even the music. I play this around Christmas time because Christmas mode detected. And I heard people talk about it in a, in a podcast one day. I can't remember what it was. And they were talking about Tyrion. And I was just... And then they talked about the Christmas mode thing. And I actually went over Christmas. I was like, oh, I have my Pi Zero. I have hooked up a little bit of things or whatever. And I'm going to see what it's like. And, yeah. It picked up it was like it picked up on the times. Like, Christmas mode detected. And it did it well into old Christmas Day. I was like, oh, this is so great. Like, over Christmas, sitting down, having a drink and playing this. Light slow. Tree twinkling away. But... Even the menus look pretty solid and right on. This, you know, there's a little bit of artifact in there, but not much. But we're gonna we're gonna hop out of this. We're gonna quit the game. But that's a non-core uh, thing running. But that's not an emulator. That's just a port. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. We're gonna do a couple things here now. So, Marvel vs. Capcom, same thing. Config gets changed to video launch because as well that helps you deal with games that may have differing resolutions some games are 224p some games are 240p all depends on the programming again ooh, analog was on settings configuration now you may run into funny issues sometimes with certain games and we may point that out at some point in this one i can't remember i think playstation may so Step this back to the 1x, but then we're going to 4 to 3 it. Uh, we're not going to stretch it right out. That actually looks pretty spot on. 
and now we should oh wait one thing we're gonna i never really checked its uh options menu let's take a look this is always a oh where is it to a moss up here always go in here just in case if there's certain things so enable interlacing mode we're not going to turn any of that on but if you want to play around a bit with the graphics in the playstation same thing there's no longer any noise or anything around spider-man he looks solid now there and the text text looks very solid now it is a little bit carved out because it is 240p but uh i'll do a little bit of the opening here show off spider-man moving across as well as uh, captain capcom or whatever the hell his name is oh my god i feel so bad i can't remember his name but look Ooh, smooth. If you get lines, certain lines that, like, there's shimmer on them, then, yeah, you're not scaled properly. This, oh, man, no. Oh, scan lines. <laughs> Is Xander, if you're watching, buddy, yeah, get one. This is just composite. I'll send you, I have an RF converter. If you find one with a coaxial, settle for it. I'll send you an RF converter, buddy. I'm not going to really worry too much about this right here. Look at that, though. That is such a mix. I'm just more going to show off the graphics of this running in 240p. It's really clean looking on, on, on this now. You see, like here at the title card, to, to all the all, all the all the scan lines and things. Yeah. But anyway, I can play that all day too. Um, oh, yes. So same thing here. Spam the button a little bit. Video. Launch. Yada yada yada, yeah yeah yeah, scaling, flick it. Um, check the quick menu options just in case. Uh, because you can set three button and everything here, yeah. Core provided aspect ratio. There we go for CRT. Oh, so it actually does stuff for CRT. Um. Now mine looks a little bit carved out on my TV, but that's because I've actually like adjusted it in the um, in the uh, maintenance mode or service mode. Ooh. Welcome to the oh yes, no, this is spot on. Oh, the lines are nice and crisp. I don't see any. Let's get this moving around just to make sure. No. Oh nice. This is this is great. Now this isn't a filter. This isn't like, you know, using like 2XI or HQ Eagle or whatever the fuck. This is a shader, but it's for centering your pixels. Is there's a ver nearest vertical integer ones. This is basically to make sure your pixels are what doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because they're emulating, they're maybe like, oh, this is a resolution of this. Yeah, but it's not taken into account. The emulator's not taken into account. It displays on a television that's 240p slash 480i or whatever. You know, so emulators sometimes are more geared towards, oh, this is going to be on an HDMI television. I don't give a shit. This thing going to run whatever resolution I throw at it. So, no, this takes the, the care for that. Snatcher. Cheeky. Now, this one, I believe I have to use Pico Drive as well. Which is already set the video output, so this should just do it anyway. I don't think I should have to do much. No, I think that's pretty spot on. Let's double check. Ooh. Oh, no, I was wrong. That's right. Per category, it will do them individually. 
But I do believe that Pico Drive has options that... Oh, no, those are all the same. Uh, we're not going to need to overclock anything, but... Yeah, logo's on the point. Text is on point. I just want to get the intro going because it's awesome as hell. So we're over an hour in. I'm almost done. I'm going to wrap it up in the next 10 minutes. We're just going through the last couple things. So we still haven't quite made it to MAME yet, but um, we're going to touch on that in a minute. There are a couple of MAME games there um, that we're going to show. But yeah, I got to do a stream of this at some point soon. Now that I know I can stream stuff and what settings not to screw with. Um, on OBS, I mean to say, because I'm, I'm able to do quite good recordings with this. But um, I really just want to show like a few of the graphics in the, in the little prologue that they give here. But I'm looking at it now, yeah, on, on my TV and... Now, it's not sharp 90-degree edges with my pixels versus the scan lines, of course, because we're doing composite here. But this is this is great. Like, look at this. This is more than adequate. Like, yeah, there's some dots and dithering because it's composite, ultimately. If I could ever... I think I'm going to have to upgrade at some point when I capture by the end of the year. But uh, other than that, should be fine. Um, this really is doing me for now, though. I have no complaints right now. <laughs> wow. It actually does look nice on this, though. On on this versus on the capture, like the dottiness on the capture you see on some of the edges and some of the colors here, you don't see like the, 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 the grid behind. That's solid on the television. That's just capture device. But, I mean, like, still, it looks great. But it looks even better on my CRT. And, like, this is quite fine, though, I gotta say. I'm just gonna get it cut to, like. Actually, no. And here we go. It has a very, yeah, very 90s feel to it, though, when when you show, show, show this part. This is the, oh, the, what's under the surface. I was going to do the whole uh, nice opening to it. Uh, it's into the 90s, but it's still, it feels like the late 80s in a way, just kind of like people say like the early 2000s was still technically the 90s in a lot of ways. Like, this, is, this is quite good, though. I can actually, you know. Now, I need to get a Pi 4 or uh, Pi 4, I should say. The 400, this won't work with because the 400 doesn't have stock composite. But I will, as I said, try this with the 400. Uh, with the Pi 4, I mean, to say. I'm going to get one at some point soon. Won't have to be too jazzed up because the, after two gigs, I think, you really don't need more RAM than that for emulation. But this is looking quite fine. But we'll just cut right to the chase really quick. Because we need the vertical crawl here. Yeah, there's no shimmer at all. That just... The, the pixels and the, everything looks, you know, online. But yeah, that's... I think that's a good overview. So, this video really shows you how to really optimize this hardware for just a stock composite output on one of these things and to better display things. Oh, wait. I did my MAME in... Oh, wait. Oh, we haven't done MAME yet. Hold on. Oopsie, I forgot to install MAME 2000. All right. First, we're going to do Final Flight. Final Flight is CPS1. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to spam that button. But now, we got to go down to config. 
Now, now the first time it says like if it's the only emulator, it's like you want to pick me, right? And it's like okay, and we go down to the output, and then we go to launch. Get ready. Settings, config, video, scaling, and. There we go. Now, what I did was, we'll go back over a little bit. Now, this is adjusted to 2x. We can adjust it to 1x, as we've done here. And we're going to go through and try 32 by 9 and see if this doesn't look ugly. As I said, MAME's a little bit of a complicated thing. But so far, so good. The text looks fine. The real test is if we're going to have shimmer. Shimmer is where we haven't got things corrected. Look at this guy. This guy's fast. So far, so good, though. Suck it! Barrels! You're not wood. Wood's more valuable. But yeah, so that's what we had to do CPS one. Now, this is a Neo Geo game. However, I do have it running in MAME. So because this is actually from a um, MAME uh, ROM um, thing that I have. Now, we're not going to bother with that in there. We're just going to let it do its thing. And oh, 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 wait, I don't have the Neo Geo uh, stuff in there for that. That's fine. Whatever. We don't really need to show it off. Even though it's one of my favorite games ever. Arc. Uh, but it's not really that important. But yeah, I got to show Final Fight. But really, what I've established here is I've shown, and this is just fleshing out the, the post and form, is basically having your 240p CRT goodness with just the stock composite and using pretty much any pie you get your hands on minus like the Pi Zero, which you have to populate the pins for, but you can still do it for that. And the Pi 400, because it doesn't have anything populated at all. And I don't think you can even break it out if you solder directly onto the uh, SOC. Anyway, <laughs> besides the point. So, these three things I showed you, and the links will be in the description, um, will get you off and running for a bit more accurate representation 240p. And however, you still keep, look at this. A 480i menu. Uh, as well, the submenus, though, in RetroPie, if you do that with the, the, the whole progressive 1816 for SDTV mode, these menus and all this crap, they're going to look horrible. Like, you can use pretty much any of the standard definition menus here. You don't have to use one that's configured for this. And I saw one guy in his thing, he's like, it's good for him what he was doing, but he's like, he was redoing all these pixel integer JPEGs and all this stuff. I'm like, this just uses stuff that's already there. You just use a few things and let the actual emulator do some work. Much less work. Now, is this totally on and accurate? I don't know. Works with my TV. Works with my recording setup. We'll go find out. So it's going to get uploaded tonight. Um, stay tuned for some other things, I guess. And I'm going to do a video where I'm just more showing it working actually with this television. Maybe. Grab my camera, see what we do. All right, take care. Oh, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll have to do a live stream tonight.